I was going to move to LA. Mm -hmm. I was going to be the biggest movie star ever. And I was never going to have children. Donna Eyre, actress, TV presenter, producer, entrepreneur, and philanthropist. She's here to talk about living life in the spotlight. I didn't want to be ordinary. Life happens and we're not always fully in control of it. I don't feel I ever need to be the star of the show because I feel like I've got it all out of my system. There's a lot of stigma with child stars. I think I'm probably one of the few that hasn't been to rehab. What you're doing with business is exactly what you're doing on set. It's a very creative thing at the end of the day. I've always been impressed by women that have built businesses. So-and-so can do it and so-and-so can do it. Then it can't be rocket science, right? When did you first figure out your taste for business? Ooh. Hello, my fellow leaders. Welcome back to Anatomy of a Leader with me, Maria Vorostovsky. I am so excited to bring you season seven. Before we get into this episode, I want to thank you from the bottom of my heart for leaving the reviews on Apple Podcasts. It really means a lot to me and to the show. I'm going to be reading some of the comments at the very end, so stick around. So, this week, I sit down with none other than Donna Eyre, actress, philanthropist, entrepreneur. Donna is warm, she's funny, and I felt like I've known her forever. We talk about growing up in the spotlight, we talk about fame, other people's perceptions of you, and also the impact of social media on young people. I really hope you enjoy this episode. Follow, subscribe, wherever you're listening or you're watching. So here she is, Donna Eyre. The blueprint and of actors and entrepreneurs are incredibly close. So why most actors become entrepreneurs and vice versa because it's mm. a very creative thing at the end of the day. And mm. actually what you're doing with business is exactly what you're doing on set, which is you are connecting dots and understanding people and yes. you're solving problems all the time. And that the, the makeup of that personality, mm. in my experience, is very much... I mean, you can almost put the actors and... Well, the, the intelligent ones mm. and the um, entrepreneurs into this. They were very, very similar mold, mm. actually, in the way they think and work out That's things. That's really interesting. I haven't thought about making that it's connection. It's really not but... that big a jump at all. People sometimes mm. go, you know, how can you do all this in business and then mm. do that? They feel like they're very, very different roles. But for me, they've actually always been the same mm. because learning a script or learning a character is very much understanding people and understanding yes. a business. And then when you're looking at a, a, a project on set and things, you're kind of looking at the needs and drives of that character and what it is they want. And it's exactly the same with a company or with a business goal. Mm. And it's a very instinctive approach. Acting is very instinctive. And so is business. It's very, very instinctive. And you're finding where those spaces are and those gaps are and those those dots that need to be connected and those gaps that need filling. And it for me, it's just been the same job. Mm. I, I don't see it as two different roles. Mm -hmm. um, I see the parallels because there's big I, parallel, yeah. I agree with, with acting of understanding psychology and understanding yourself mm -hmm. and being able to like relate to other people mm -hmm. and you kind of have to do things on the fly sometimes as well yeah. you're kind of in the present you're having to just just, just do it yeah without having yeah yeah so I, I definitely see that parallel and I think mm -hmm. that the parallels to me have become closer even more so in the last you know even just the last two years because I think obviously understanding yourself definitely is very important um, but understanding, I guess, when you're looking at a character or a script, you understand what what, what the what your motivation is, and it's exactly the same in business. I found more so recently. Um, I've been doing lots of focus and thinking about what what the same thing. What's motivating you, driving you in business? You know, what are your principles? What are your what are those things? Your reason for doing something. And they're very, very different now than they might have been 20 years ago. Mm. That you know, um, certainly for me, you know, when when I do build any build or advise on any sort of business now, I'm really like, uh, why are we doing this? Why, <laughs> you know, um, and what are the principles behind it? 
just as I would in in a sort of drama project. Mm. I think with theatre, I mean, I come from a very creative family. So my mum was a ballet dancer. My stepfather was an opera singer. Oh, how my... lovely growing up in a household like that. Was it was it joyous? Dramatic. <laughs> oh, was it? Was it well, lots of drama? Was there lots? Was there was there a lot of drama and a lot yeah. of? I mean, my my father was. Uh, well, he still is. He's a professor. Um, in music and he plays the flute professionally but he's also got lots of different interests but I mean you I basically grew up underneath a piano right of you know being in a theatre just sort of you know watching everything that's unfolding you know seeing all of the rehearsals like wandering the backstage of the theatre um, you know, just absorbing it all and thinking, this is amazing. There's like a whole other world. That, as a child, exists. how did that feel? Was it quite chaotic? That part felt amazing. That's the part that okay, I loved. Okay, that was a good so part. So being behind the scenes, watching how it all happens, you know, hearing the music. And I felt very inspired. So actually, I wanted to be on stage. So I have that, mm-hmm. you know. That little that, theatrical Yeah, well, that, that kind of un unmet need of probably being on stage so I did mm-hmm. pursue it for a little while and then I chickened out and I didn't go ahead and was like oh you know you have to be poor for a very long time <laughs> before potentially you might make it and I just want to have something more yeah uh concrete and more reliable a bit more constant and yes yeah and it's so not the, it's not a job for the consistency or yes stability or any of those things yeah. it's it's a it's an odd choice of profession but mm. for me it's all I've ever known but mm. you do become very entrepreneurial because every single week you have to create a new job a new role you don't have you're not on you don't have that long contract you don't have that regular income so every week or every month or every however long that the, as soon as one job's finished, you have to create another one for yourself. Mm-hmm. And it's, you know, it's competitive. It's so funny. You know, I don't know why I didn't make this parallel before because I've had my own business now for coming up to 12 years and everything that I was afraid of You've going already conquered into being in the, the, you know, into the theatre world, I'm facing every single day because yeah. you're so right. Like every time you have a new project, great, you know, you're living Yeah, life. you have to pull it together pretty quick, right? And then when that's over, you know, where's the next gig coming from? Yeah. So it's so similar. So inadvertently, been... I ended up in the same place that I've yeah. been trying to avoid. I mean, as, a, as an actor or any sort of performer or any mm-hmm. creative, anybody really who's kind of self-employed or creating, you... you you've been running yourself as a business for so long so then it's a very natural transition to run and you know also if you run a household or a family you can pretty much run a business it Mm. all starts with that Mm. you know once you've learned how to run a home or a family or you know we're all entrepreneurs to a degree because once you've learned how to run anything efficient because I think that's what it is about well for me it's about efficiency and I like to do things I like to be efficient you know mm. also being a, a single mother I like to be efficient because I just don't have time to waste like all of us right <laughs> so I think once you've run anything mm-hmm. in an efficient way you just literally scale that up and it becomes bigger and you can move that around mm. into whatever field you want to take me back mm. because you were in biker grove from the age of 10 yeah getting into acting at such a young age mm-hmm. is that something that you really really wanted and at which point did you realize that's that's what you wanted to do oh well there was no plan I don't think anybody has a plan at 10 I certainly didn't have a plan at 20 and probably didn't even have one at 30 Mm. so I didn't really have nothing it was a conscious decision it was just a lot of fantasy growing up you know I think acting is a lot of fantasy I was an only child so I spent a lot of time playing on my own in the northeast creating my own entertainment and just you know there's not a lot I had a very humble childhood so there wasn't really that much to do other than entertain myself mm-hmm. so I grew up you know dancing to I don't know Diana Ross Tina Turner I, I grew up sort of idolizing strong women in the entertainment industry I kind of there's something about that that always appealed to me I, re- it, I was always attracted to performing mm. um I don't know why I just always liked it it just seemed like another world it seemed like access to another world I don't know if it was like very early manifestation but I sort of manifested a life for myself from a very young age I wanted 
to be around all those exciting, unusual people, those glamorous people. And I kind of just gravitated towards that Mm. um, organically, uh, but it was never a conscious decision. It just sort of happened with a huge amount of luck. Mm -hmm. Um, And then obviously later on, a lot of hard work and resilience and perseverance and all of those things. But those things all came a lot later. In the beginning, you do need an element of luck. Um, And yeah, I mean, it was a very unusual and very rare opportunity that I had because I just was in the right place at the right time. I had an opportunity and then luckily I got another one and then another one and then every opportunity that came my way, I just grabbed every single one without any game plan. I was so kind of also coming from where I came from, I was just very grateful. I think, you know, it's very different for women today, but we've seen the changes. I think, you know, if I, would I have made different decisions today? Possibly, you know, I didn't need to do everything. Um, I could have said no a lot more, but I just was so excited and yeah, I just grabbed everything, maybe a little bit too eager. But what kind of things do you think you you should have said no to? No, I sh- you know I I certainly don't regret anything I've done. Mm-hmm. And actually, this I would maybe I wouldn't have done half the things that I would have done if I'd have been a bit fussy. There's also an element today where, you know, I see obviously I'm surrounded by lots of young women today as well, and I see sometimes they can be a bit too picky and a bit too choosy. And I'm like, you know what? Not every job's going to be like, you know, the best job or the best. Sometimes you've got to roll your sleeves up and just mm-hmm. do a bit of crap as well, right? Well, this is, this is this whole thing. So it's like always a fine line. of like... and generation, yeah. um, you know, the boomers and the Gen Zs of, you know, being too picky and having almost... Like not everything's going to be the coolest yeah. job or the best job or, you know, the sometimes you've just got to um, get on with it and not... And also... I, I kind of I'm happy that I, my thinking wasn't too contrived or planned. It was very organic, because if I'd sat down and you know tried to be all clever and strategic about it, then that also doesn't work. So mm. it's always a a bit of a mix, you know. Um, yeah, we don't certainly. I think there are more. We don't need to do everything, and we don't need to be as grateful for every opportunity. And I think women have become a lot more empowered. So I think that's a really wonderful, positive change. But then there's there's no harm in just getting on with it and doing more and thinking less as well because energy creates energy mm. and sometimes you just got to be in it. No, I know what you mean about like, you know, spending a lot less time thinking and just like being doing. in the thick of it. Yeah. Um, yeah, I think we can all fall into that trap of trying to either strategize too much over plan stuff over plan or just get bogged down into like the thinking and having all of the answers before you kind of go out in yeah. the world and just do it yeah and you learn through doing exactly you get mm. the experience through the doing and, and you know you can't go from sort of zero to ten you've got to get through all the other steps as well along the way and I do see a lot of the younger generation you know they kind of want to go And obviously they can now. Everything seems much more, you know, accessible and easier to do. We've got everything at the click of our fingers. You know, you can message anybody in the world. It's Mm -hmm. kind of amazing, right? You can, you've got a direct message to anyone you want to connect with. We, I didn't have that, you know, like we didn't, uh, women of my age group. So you'd have to sort of go and do certain things to... And I relate this to executive search. Like when I started... I had to go to libraries to look at people <laughs> in books, like literally look for names in in like journals. I know. And look for things. We sound okay, we so a- old. <laughs> Honestly, I mean, I was just saying it's like it's nearly t- twenty years now. I, every but- time I walk past a phone box, I'm like, oh my god, I remember standing in a phone box <laughs> and like putting ten p pieces in to call people and try and, you know, I I, re- I really sound old, but you know, I didn't have a phone until god knows what age so yeah it's different and it's Mm. it's it's there's there's great things to be taken from from both yes no exactly i mean and this is what i was saying about being able to access anybody just because you have someone's number or you can reach Mm. them Mm. that doesn't necessarily mean you you can you have to 
There's still boundaries that should be respected and it's kept. It's not even, what I'm starting to say is like, it's not necessarily the boundaries. It's the fact that, I mean, I'm talk, speaking this as again, as a, you know, from a headhunting or like a business perspective, where even though things are now much more easily accessible, because there's so much volume coming to every single person with opportunities and conversations mm. and messages, to some extent, you have to be more strategic and much more choosy about what you either put yourself up for Do because or what it, you accept, mm. because there's just more of it. There's more of everything. It's so, yeah, it's quite overwhelming a lot, right? Because there's so much noise, as we know, there's so much there's also a lot of there's it's yeah it's there's so much quantity of everything sadly mm. more quantity than quality in my opinion mm. but um yeah it it, it it takes time and energy to filter through all of that um and it is kind of frustrating as well sometimes because you know we're not for the younger generation because for them it's so natural but i for example social media i really find it it's not something that I naturally enjoy, mm. but it's something I'm learning to embrace more. Um, but my days are so busy in the moment doing stuff that I get even get frustrated that that sometimes that that has to be part of the job because I'm so you know I just don't get time or necessarily want to be mm. on my phone Instagramming my breakfast, but. <laughs> Um, yeah, so I never know how much of that to do or not do. Um, so I'm still kind of navigating that. But I mean, yeah, it's just kind of amazing, right? It's like everybody is their own, their star of their own network. Mm. Cause it's, so for you, is it the aspect of having to be on the phone and commentate on your life? Or is it to do with sharing more of your intimate moments like what part of it that doesn't appeal to you um i'm always a much more in the room kind of person i like real connection with people in real time for me there's nothing like getting in a room physically with somebody and having that conversation or you know it's like even in my industry now as an actor everything's on a self-tape and I, you know, again, I yeah. sound very old, but I love the days where you actually get to go in the room with a director and play and, you know, get feedback. And, you know, everything's just like now, if we live in a very digital, drop it all in a file and boom, you know, there's no, I like the, I like the physical and I like the intimacy in everything that I do. Uh, so, yeah, I just sound like a dinosaur. <laughs> no, I think a lot of people would empathize with that because part of the dangers of social media is being so sucked into it that you forget that real life and real connection and real people exist. Mm. And you can see everything and anything. Mm. And this perception that you can be anyone that you choose to be, but yet you're still, you know, lying there scrolling mm. on your phone observing what everybody else is doing yeah let alone you know kind of documenting what you're doing that you forget what real life is yeah and so I totally get that I yeah. also have a very kind of on on off relationship it's a love hate thing right I, yes. yeah it is sometimes I love it and sometimes I'm like oh mm. um it's kind of crazy because I remember growing up obviously as a child. I was on television very, very young. Mm -hmm. And it's kind of funny. I, I remember that being aware of, you know, you stand out when you're on television. And especially when there's only, there was, I can't believe how old I sound. We, there was only like four channels, right? Mm -hmm. So, you know, you hear a, bit, a certain amount of noise when you're on television, but it's limited, right? There's only four channels, but you know, they're like, oh, there's a girl off the telly oh my god she looks like this oh she looks like that so you were I, I remember being aware of comments mm -hmm. when I was younger mm -hmm. but on a very manageable scale and I thought about that the other day I was like god it's kind of crazy isn't it it's like everybody is a child star now mm -hmm. but on a much bigger scale because I remember being 10 years old and hearing those comments you know like you go to school I don't know you're on tv and they go oh look there's whatever the comments were um, and it, was, it would only be one or two, but you know, sometimes they can, you, you remember them and they, you don't think that they affect you, but they probably do when you're 10 or 11. Yeah. Um, 
And there are only a couple of comments. And I thought, God, I was trying to put myself back in those shoes to realise what being 12 or 13 feels like now on social media when you're hearing all those things, but you're hearing them on a much bigger scale, right? We all know there's a lot of stigma with child stars, right? Mm -hmm. They all apparently were a bit nuts. I think I'm probably one of the few that hasn't (laughs) been to rehab. Maybe I should have gone. But, you know, um, that kind of growing up in that spotlight, as we know, for child stars was never considered to be healthy. Mm -hmm. Um, And it's kind of crazy because everybody now is almost on their own child star, right? On these platforms, they have viewing. And you're talking and about having comments that would be said in passing, or maybe you hear it. Or even to your face, but, but this, it would be, today this is what it's I'm, very... Um, it would be quite unusual, or it's, it's a lot harder to say something so rude to your face. And it's almost less scary, but I, I was trying to really picture myself, because also I'm, I'm writing about it quite a bit as well at the moment. Um, because I think there's so many great things from social media, but you know that, you know, for these young young women and obviously young men, for anybody young, it is a concern. Um, and I just thought these, this society of comments and being able to just voice your opinion, well, it's not really an opinion. When you know it's kind of, it's bullying on a massive mm-hmm. scale. Um, I have a, a a big issue with that, and I don't. I think that it's not regulated enough Mm -hmm. to protect our younger children from such things. It's like all these comments pages, uh, comments on newspapers. I, honest to God, do not see the point of them. I mean, I don't care, right? I'm obviously, I'm a grown woman and I, I think it's kind of hilarious, but I'm always putting myself in the shoes of a younger woman And I'm thinking if you are a certain age, let's say under 16 or under 18, you shouldn't be able to write and comment on people like that Mm -hmm. because they're children, you know? And what are we doing to protect children? And in my opinion, I mean, I think that, you know, there's always that argument if is it free speech, is it comment? No, I I think it's really nice. I don't Mm -hmm. see the point of them if people are going on to comment and ridicule or attack somebody's personal appearance. And I think, especially under the age of say 18 or even 16, that shouldn't really be allowed. Mm -hmm. And I don't know what's going on to protect children from having to read those about themselves. Mm -hmm. There is a difference between having an opinion about a subject matter and there is completely another thing commenting in a negative way about somebody's identity or appearance yeah that is the only purpose that exists is to hurt them like, yeah. is it I mean, helpful or is it hurtful that behavior is never acceptable at no. any age let's be yeah. honest um but i think as a first step it should be illegal to do it mm. for under 18s mm. when children are much more vulnerable to these sort of things mm. i just think i can't i can't believe that it's allowed yeah so well, and as a same. mother mm-hmm. um and just as a as a, a human being it's just not right i think we're still so early with social media and being so visible like everybody just you know everyone's visible and if you're not it's almost like you don't exist you don't do anything you're, like, you're not doing yeah. anything what does she do anything interesting what does she do? have no no if we're life. not tweeting about it every second but i think what, with what, everything that's happened with revenge porn and i mean that's like one extreme but having some kind of process and making certain things illegal mm. that you cannot do that um i think it has to spill over into more nuanced areas such as making those horrendous comments because we are talking about young women young men reading that as a grown woman when i'm reading these comments I and mean, they are quite some of them are hilarious but when it comes to if children you, good, you know if you I, get, <laughs> I get a bit uh, a bit yeah beefed up when I hear people Mm. commenting about children I'm like oh they should be they should definitely get a slap on the wrist for that (laughs) you became a mum at at quite a young age 
How old yes. were you? 24? I was 24, 25. Wow. Some people might say that's considered old in Newcastle. Well, uh, right. Well, <laughs> Apparently, I, I, say, yeah, that's holding out quite a long time. <laughs> when my mum had me, and so she was 24 when she had me, and mm. that was back in Soviet Russia, she was called an old mother then. Yeah. Yeah. I was 25. I mean, my mother was, gosh, I oh, again have a lot more empathy for my mother now when I realise how young that really is. I mean, 25, I've got more empathy for my self it is incredibly young for sure didn't feel it at the time but in hindsight yes it is very young mm. and my mother was like 19 20 when she had me so that's even younger again but that was more you know it was just more what we did i mean obviously if we go back even further into history we were getting married and having children at 13. um so things just change and they evolve mm. um I mean, I've obviously enjoyed being a young mother. I think I'm quite happy that I did do it so young because my, re- <laughs> my daughter requires yeah. an awful lot of energy. Mm. Um, so I think there is, there's perks. Uh, there's, there's like any situation, there's positives and negatives to being a young mother and positives and negatives to being an older mother, right? Mm. But it so doesn't we'll matter because however moments. you plan it, you can't, yeah. you can't, plan and be too you know life flows life's got to happen mm. in an organic way oh i love what you're saying because the lady who was talking to mm. earlier today she was talking about the metaphor of life of being a river yeah and you know she's a very impressive businesswoman who has achieved a lot in terms of financial and business success and how she talks about like no river is direct straight through so you have and to it's go with not the flow. going to be perfect either nothing is perfect so just let it flow it is actually i read a, ch- a chinese proverb or story about actually about this river flow and mm. actually it was talking you know when there are turbulent waters and things like that, there was a a big current and all these people were, the ones that actually were holding on really, really tight were the ones that didn't survive. And actually the ones that let go and just went with the flow of the river mm-hmm. were the ones that ended up making it safely. So I sometimes remind that when I try and get a little bit too rigid or controlling things that are going on around me, it's just let go, just mm-hmm. let go and go with it you know because so many things around you are just moving and actually you don't need to move Mm. what moment in your life you felt that you were holding on really tightly and you didn't maybe let go as much as you should I mean I've changed so much probably at a speed that I mean for me I, I kind of really enjoy evolving and learning I always have so I'm always trying to do better be better um so, I mean, I was always, it's crazy because as a younger woman, I was obviously much more, I was definitely more anxious. I was stressed about lots of things. I worried about lots of stuff and not a like lot. What kind of stuff? Oh God, when you're in your 20s, you stress about everything. Mm-hmm. feels like a big deal and it's really not. Mm-hmm. Um, it takes an awful lot to rattle me these days. I don't really even when everything else around me can be going, you know, spinning up. I'm pretty, I can just let it all go on around me. Not a lot. I'm not as reactive as I used to be. Um, I think I was a very reactive younger woman, but and that's also very healthy. You know, I think you need to be, you need to have that fire in your belly as well, because I think when you're passionate and you want to go somewhere and you've got things to do, you do care a lot. And that, you know, that can, you do react a bit more. And I was always reacting to things around me a lot more when I was younger. And now I, I, I kind of, my, I've got my center. Was there a moment that you've realized that that's happened for you or, or something specific happened to like, I think it's just experience, mm-hmm. right? And it's just, Yeah, it comes with experiences. And I think it is one of those, you know, cliched sayings, but you just, when you, when you've had real things go on in your life, which obviously the older you get, you do, you experience real, Mm -hmm. you know, you've got real problems to fix. Then you just don't sweat the small stuff so much and you really appreciate the good stuff and your eyes are a bit more open and you are, you have a lot more gratitude 
for when things are good mm-hmm. um, and a lot more appreciation for the now. I really don't worry too far ahead or too certainly I, I'm not one for looking back anyway. Um, yeah, it's, it's, it is much, you know, I'm quite present <laughs> mm. most of the time. It's like the things that you go through make you realize that you are much stronger than you think. Oh, hell yeah. One hundred percent. Yeah. Like what doesn't kill you makes you stronger. Yeah. yeah. I think, you know what, I think, I think we're just all, you know, we're pretty impressive. You know, we are, I think I'm surrounded by people and women every day and, and men who really impress me. And I'm just like, yeah, you know, we're all doing pretty good. We've all got to take stock. I think we're all trying our best. We're all navigating very unusual times. We've all been through a lot collectively um, and individually. So I think we're all going in a pretty good direction as people. And I think we've just got to hold on to that and remember that we're all doing Mm. We're, do- we're all doing okay. <laughs> <laughs> we're all right. <laughs> yeah, we're all right. Yeah. Take me back to the conversation talking about how acting is so close to business. Like, when did you first figure out your taste for business? <sighs> well, I think it's, it's funny because I talk about this a lot. Uh, I think um, I've always had it in me. I think also from survival, right? I, I've spent a lot of my life surviving. And then, you know, growing up in the Northeast, I've always known how to hustle, right? I've always been a bit of a hustler. I've enjoyed the the hustle because I always been driven by being independent, always. Growing up in the Northeast, in the, let's be honest, the 80s was not easy for anyone, right? They were tough times. Um, economically and politically, it was uh, people in the Northeast were angry about what was going on. So we were fired up and um, I felt that, you know, growing up and I was aware that things were difficult financially in our household. And I, and, I, and, and that, that was tough. I never wanted that. So I always wanted it. I was always wanting to never have that. So I just wanted to work, work, work to build as much independence and stability as I could for myself. So, you know, I I always wanted to just have that freedom to, I don't know, eat wherever you want and be able to go wherever you want, you know, just Mm. to, so that was always my driving force. So that's why I I guess I started working very, very young. And then I just enjoyed being around people in business. I enjoyed being watching people who were structuring things in a certain way. I enjoyed learning. My reasons for enjoying business when I was younger are very different from my reasons today. And that's when I've really shifted my focus. Because obviously when I was a young girl, I just wanted to earn money and buy a flat and go shopping, right? Mm. Well, that obviously... Thankfully, that's not my driving force to do. It would be a bit odd if my goal was to just, you know, go out and buy a handbag or pairs of shoes. Well, after shoes. a while, when you've had it, we've yeah. had it all. Like, sometimes handbags don't hit the spot anymore. <laughs> and I, sometimes I still like, you know, get excited <laughs> about a, 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 a dress. Or, but no, my, my, my goals now, obviously, I'm not 22. Uh, they're very different. So when I'm thinking about what's driving me today, um, sometimes I can still be a bit superficial, but they're not the same superficial reasons you know I think and we talk about this a lot because I launched a new uh I co-founded a new company last year with my business partner who has is aligned on the same goals and we we talk a lot about what are the goals and the principles and I think people really should sort out their principles as a you know as a person and as a company and I think our principles are very simple um one of them is to keep it very simple because we can just everybody overcomplicates everything all the time and one of our principles is very much to keep it as simple as possible right um the other thing is when you're younger you go how could it help me what could i get what is it doing for me and actually i think my thinking for a long while now has been how can i or how can we help other people and i think if that's your focus it shifts everything in a massive way and and it's it has to be obviously a genuine shift so now you know whatever it is you're doing if you're selling something if you're giving a service you know how can you bring value to other people so that for me 
um, the new company is very much focused on we're only driven by people and you know how can we help people how can we encourage support um, so for me it's it's always everything I do is people led for me I get excited by people more than the product mm -hmm. so whatever it is or whatever I'm working with for me I love working with talented interesting people I know there's a lot of talk about diversity but for me it's always been about diversity I like people from all you know that's what makes things exciting and interesting um so for me people um keeping it simple um how you can help what value can we bring to them rather than the other way around um everything I say I'm going to do I do so it's really important to to deliver one of the things with um the new company is very much about time it's to give you know one of the things we've stopped we are all incredibly stretched so for me giving time to people and to others is our most valuable thing that we've got especially as we get older because it's the thing we have less of mm. so I'm very careful where I put my time now but I'm I'm I get real satisfaction from you know sharing that and giving it when it where and when it can be helpful mm. Um, and that that kind of um, that makes me tick a lot more mm. and sometimes buying shoes <laughs> <laughs> that's got to be done <laughs> uh, but yeah though you know so you really got to focus on the things I think that why you're doing something and then obviously on the creative side of the project we're not reading scripts and on set and that's just that just mm. you know feeds uh, feeds my soul I just love working with for me, it's always people. Everything is driven with people. And that's maybe why I struggle a little bit sometimes on the phone because it's, 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 it's that it's, barrier, it's, maybe. That there's more of a barrier, mm. which, you know, it's still wonderful that we can be also connected. And especially during the pandemic, mm. I think it was incredible that we were so connected and could still function. We're here, FaceTime all our loved ones mm. and, um, you know work and all of that so there is a time and a place where I am wow it's it's incredible how things can be accelerated with technology but there's also we mustn't forget about people mm. no you're right about that connection because I mean when when I for my work that's all it's about it's about mm. talking to people mm. and the screens sort of zoom calls for me is oh, like the so kiss awful. of death it's awful. I, I don't know what it is but I just cannot I cannot like I, it's fine it's useful but I'd rather that do it real... on the phone or in person yeah because how can you feel that real energy mm. in a room that whatever it is right it's like also when you meet somebody and I again I think it's wonderful and I think but that's why for me personally like online dating just would never work right mm. a kind because you're missing that fine I mean I think it's brilliant and I have so many friends that are having a great time um but for me yeah zoom there's a, there's just a, a bit of that ingredient that mm -hmm. you don't get and if it's it's a feeling or it's a whatever it is I'm trying I to think, think of the word to describe this false idea that you can, you know, you can see the body language or you can see the person, but there is There's something... an energy field that happens, right? Yes. When you are in a, as I say, whether you're in a meeting or you're in talking to somebody, having a coffee, whatever it is, I just think we need to never... Forget that. Forget that, yeah. yeah. No, it has its purposes. It has its uses. But I think if you over rely on it, and I know that days will be when I'm spending too much time either in the home or just like talking on the phone or like not in person. That's something I don't know that that sense of connection, that sense of being connected to other lives. And I don't know, it, it is an energetic thing. And it's also right. It's crazy because I guess if we're spending all of this time building our businesses on social media, which we all do, I also find a bit vulnerable if I'm building and putting so much time into a company, right, which effectively you're not a shareholder in and you're not running, you're not managing. And also you've never met 
the founder of the company who can switch it off at any moment. It's like the craziest thing you could build. Like I see a lot of these kids and I was trying to talk to my daughter about it because, you know, obviously everything's on TikTok now. So they're all, you know, they get millions and millions and millions and millions of views on TikTok, my daughter, for example. And I'm like, wow, yeah, it's kind of amazing. It really is. But then I'm like, I personally would just, I feel a bit strange about letting somebody in charge and run my business. I could spend four years building that business, let's say whatever platform, um, and build up my audience or whatever it is that you're doing. And then somebody in a room that you never might can literally just take down your account, cancel it. That person's got an awful, awful lot of power over your business. It's like getting in it's just a very strange concept mm -hmm. for me because you put all of that investment of time, right? When we go back to time, the one thing none of us, you put all that time into a company that you're not even a shareholder in. Mm. It's weird. Mm. Unless, of course, you own a bit of TikTok, I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> or you're, you have shares yeah, on Instagram, shares, yeah, I don't know. Yeah. Um, but I don't know, it's just, yeah. Mm. Is that weird? No, you're completely right. And it is happening. I mean, there's lots of people being Someone could just switch hacked. it off. Well, it's it's not even, you know, a person on the other end saying, oh, well, we no longer believe that you should be on this platform. But it's being they hacked. They shut down accounts. They can shut down accounts. Yeah. Like, and you can't get in touch. It's difficult, right? Well, if someone's just being, you know, hacked into your account, taking your account, yeah. and then you, nobody can do anything about that. I know, that it's really that. stressful. Mm. Yeah, it is really stressful. So these are all things, as I get older, I like to have some say in the management of. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, it's all fun, but I think it's got to keep it in perspective mm. and just, you know, mm. yeah. Our mutual friend said yeah. something about you, oh. which is that if she was stranded on a desert island, she would 100% want you to be on there. Oh, that's <laughs> nice. I would want to be stranded on a desert island with her too. Well, actually, I think we almost were once together. We actually were. We were stranded on an island together. Um, we went hiking together and luckily she's still speaking to me. And we're still <laughs> good friends because yeah, Sarah Curran, who is one of my favorite female founders, uh, she's great and she's always been very giving and kind and generous. Um, in fact, actually there's a lot of women in my life like that. I feel really lucky. Mm -hmm. I think women are quite generous when it comes to these things and sharing, you know, your network and giving you a leg up. Mm -hmm. Anyway, Sarah's, definitely one of those well she says that about you so she says that's that you're nice. one of the most generous most humble and no. giving people ever thanks that's nice yeah i uh, yeah with the right people i'd give everything i like giving <laughs> not with everyone mm. um so is that something have, is that something that you have always been like that or something that you've learned to be because what I see no, you can't people, learn to be generous I don't think I don't mean about being generous I, was say, it's, it's, I mean trust about, me there's a tribe it, it's just who you are it's so yeah. funny because when you're around people who aren't generous it's so funny and it, there's nothing wrong with it it's just you're very it's just completely two different mindsets it's like chalk and cheese yeah um and neither one is right or wrong sometimes I think you know that's wonderful if I'd been more like that I might have had a you know an estate in Portofino, but my so neither one is correct. They're just very different mindsets. Mm. Um, but it, it was it's always entertaining to me because, I mean, I you know I, I, all of my family and you know you go to Newcastle, most people they literally give you the shirt off their back. They're very very kind. Um, so and and people mistake generosity with with money. It's nothing to do with anything monetary gain or anything like that it's just an attitude mm -hmm. right so for me i like being around generous warm people not mm -hmm. because of anything monetary it's just because it's an attitude of yes let's do this mm -hmm. well you know that's mm -hmm. just kind of how i'm programmed mm -hmm. well what i mean about like having to learn 
or to be more selective with who you are generous to because you said like it's not for everyone yeah but then sometimes it's quite entertaining to just be really generous with those that you don't really want to be and you're not, you're not expecting Ooh, it that's, that's just that's quite fun yeah <laughs> So um, tell me, so when did that happen? <laughs> like what, well, what happened? What? Being generous with somebody. I kind, I kind of generous with everyone because even mm. when some, just because, you know, because the way I am is how I'm going to be with everyone regardless. I'm not going to let somebody's behavior change how I'm going to be. So that's how I am and I'll be the same. Even if somebody's really mean to me, I'm not mm. going to let their behavior start altering mine. Mm. Um... But should we sh- back to the island with Sarah? Yes. So if I was on an oh yes, yeah, so I was on an island with Sarah hiking, and oh my god, it was a pretty bad hiking trip. I had to basically I had to go and write an article for something. I said I've got this trip. Do you want to come with me? She's like, yeah. So we were obviously expecting this like lovely trip, and we were just basically dropped in the middle of nowhere, this like awful hostel, and there was no we had no car, there was no restaurants. So honestly, we were so hungry. There'd been no food left for us. I think it was like a three mile walk to the nearest shop, which we did. And then it was closed. So we had to walk back to the hostel because we were in the middle of nowhere with no cabs, no buses. And we were just so hungry. And I've never seen a a woman be so hungry. And I'm really not good as well at being hungry. Um, And I think we ended up spending a night in in a cave together. (laughs) On purpose or by accident? By accident. And she was so hungry. I I think I went and picked her some prickly pears <laughs> on this island because there was absolutely nothing to eat apart from I was trying to go and forage for fruit and stuff for her. And then finally we found a calf and got some potatoes. <laughs> it was the best potatoes we'd ever had. <laughs> you would eat anything after that. <laughs> yeah. Mm. Yeah, so actually... Being on a desert island with people, I think anyone with some practical skills is always a good one Mm. and a good sense of humor. I miss that in Russia. My mom had the training, but, you know, that whole concept of being in in the scouts, being able to read a map and use a compass and, you know, how do you make a fire and how do you survive Mm. in the wild? Like, we don't get any of that. You don't, of course. Nothing. So so you grew up in Siberia, right? I did, yes. Oh, such an incredible, like, landscape and quite epic, right? Yes. I've never been, but I've always wanted to go. But I'm, And also, I guess you must have grown up having banyas all the time which is my favorite thing to do i actually went to one not so long ago in london it was my first time because i've been avoiding going to them because in when i was a kid you're basically like not forced but there will be moments i was like you just stay in there and it's like so you grew up that was the norm for you it was yes it was but it was also to the point i was like i hate this because i feel like i'm going to pass out and i feel very very claustrophobic and get me out of there really so for a a very long time i don't you know not gone and i don't enjoy the heat you don't enjoy the heat but this time i went i was like you know what actually it's not that bad (laughs) so Yeah. yeah But no. yeah, it's it's a very common thing. I mean, when where my grandmother so you don't have many practical skills. I have, no. I'm well. Actually, that's not true. I can sew and I can knit. Right. Yeah. You see, I'm incredibly practical. Also, I've lived by myself for almost. Tw- I mean, yeah, but yeah, I've lived pretty much on my own for twenty years. Right. Mm-hmm. So I kind of the only thing I don't enjoy being, like, yeah, I can kind of, you know I I was out and fixing the pump on my heat over Christmas I'm pretty practical um yeah I can I do a lot of what I guess would be traditionally known as the male jobs the only thing I really don't like being on my own sometimes is the spider situation so I was this by the spider situation is never good especially when you're in the countryside or wherever and where the spiders are bigger but I'm kind of getting to grips with that but Mm-hmm. the spider thing maps I'm not so good with actually the map thing I've got pretty good survival instincts I think I could figure out most things but spiders and maps are probably <laughs> my uh yeah they're my weak spots oh and maybe <sighs> heights yeah heights yeah if I had to jump I out feel of like the plane with heights it's like a, a person to person thing 
Yeah. I'm not good with heights either. I'm okay with spiders now. I've had to jump so a plane for my food. <laughs> Mind you, I might do, I'd do anything for food. <laughs> <laughs> I might even jump out of a plane, yeah. <laughs> Would you? If, if I was hungry. <laughs> uh, yeah. I don't know. Mm. Wouldn't be my favourite things to, but you got to do say, it. With, with planes, I... Um, I used to think maybe one day I will do it that over a bungee jump. But now I just think it's just not worth it. Yeah. I just think why? why? I mean, I know some people really say it's amazing experience, but I just think. Yeah, I know. Me. I know. Right. It's just I agree. I just don't want to be. I don't want to really suffer for fun because I get asked to do a lot of those shows sometimes. Right. And, they, you know, like I'm like, oh, no, why would I like want to jump out of a plane or swim in icy waters mm. or really suffer right I just don't know if I really want to suffer mm. even you know for entertainment for entertainment no I mean obviously if my child's life depended on it I'm sure I'd be the first one jumping out of a plane and <laughs> wrestling a crocodile but other than that why would I want to do it for fun I'm not really sure no thanks no I think I'm over all of these things Quite I think as you get fun older, to watch at home though with a cup of tea right? yeah exactly in a warm blanket absolutely I mean I do <laughs> in I a do packet like... of biscuits <laughs> <laughs> I do like the outdoors but not to the extent where you feel like your life is being threatened I think that's a bit step too far but I feel like as as I'm getting older I'm realizing what I think is fun Versus what people are trying to tell you what is fun and making that decision. Yeah, well, I think we all know now what we like. You just go, and it doesn't matter if somebody likes something different to you. That's the thing, right? Let people live. Mm -hmm. I, it does not bother me at all if people are doing things around me that don't work for me. Mm. I'm happy for them, genuinely. Mm. I just don't want to do it. Yeah. Um, and it, that's one of the privileges of getting older is knowing yourself. Um, I do like, I am, I have become quite outdoorsy. So I do love being outside. I have become quite, I like, I am so happy just walking around, looking at the trees. I know that sounds like, oh my God, how boring. Um, but that's what clears my head and really makes me happy. Um, I'm not saying I want to be jumping out of planes or camping in a wet tent all night, but I need an element of of nature mm. but quite often with a nice warm bed at the end like a nice cozy log fire oh yeah i'm good with a fire you know. i can light a pretty good fire can you yeah my fires are amazing i'm actually <laughs> quite proud of my fire situation <laughs> i learned from my mum. she she did she she was the one who did the the fires and yeah um, yeah she had a good strategy yeah mm. my, yeah i do i'm pretty good with the fire i get a bit territorial around the fire now but it's like don't touch it people go i don't like the fire I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> looking back at yourself when you were younger you know 10 years old getting into the whole acting scene like what did you imagine your acting and career would look like where you are now like what would she be thinking now well when i was 18 what did i think i was going to be yeah Oh, I literally thought I was going to move to LA. Mm -hmm. I was going to be the biggest movie star ever. And I was never going to have children. I didn't, I was never going to be just, you know, I didn't want to be ordinary. I just thought, Ugh. and it's so funny because that's the healthiest, you know, you know what I mean? Mm. To be, to actually have healthy goals. It's so funny because I just honestly wanted to be, um, which is crazy because I, you know, I love all of the opposites, like being at home. I, I really do. I try and stay away from the limelight as much mm. as possible. Um, and it's kind of funny because I see all that ambition as well now in my daughter, which is lovely. But I am asking, why do you want to do that? Why do you want to, you know, I'm trying to. Um, but yeah, but life happens. And then life, as a, especially as a young woman, takes you on so many wonderful roots that was not your plan and you hadn't planned thankfully so because it just teaches us mm -hmm. that l life happens and we're not always fully in control of it and when you're 18 or 19 or 20 you think you're in control of everything and also I think when I was 19 and 20 even like as a teenager 
I don't think I had that much empathy as a teenager, mm. but it's it's hard to empathize with lots of things that seem so removed from you, things you haven't experienced. How can you have empathy for another woman or, you know, or a single mother or, you know, you've never been in any of those situations. Mm. So I, I, I understand that. And it's funny because when I, I talk to a lot of youngsters now, I'm laughing because they're, they're so opinionated and it's lovely and it's cute and it's incredibly naive also mm. because they have such strong opinions about everything. Um, and I'm to, I'm to, it's lovely and refreshing to hear all these views, but also I'm thinking it's going to be so fascinating. Like you to, have no idea. It's going to be so fascinating to talk to them all mm. in 10 years mm -hmm. because most women have all of these ideas as well. But, you know, things happen that they haven't thought of. Like, you know, yeah. shit, you fall in love. That happens to most people. Mm. And that's something that you can't really control. So lots of things happen that, I we didn't it, that weren't in the plan <laughs> I you know what you mean and also not being what you mean about the empathy bit because before I mean I my mum had my brother and sister I helped to raise them so they are you know kind of partly my kids as well so I know what it's like to have kids but I still had no idea no idea about what was in store and I didn't even contemplate other people having kids and how that you know affects their careers and what and then when I had kids of my own I was like oh now I get it. Yeah, right. And, and I, I had zero even thought about that. Yeah. Nothing. You you have no, you know, I remember, for example, my, my parents got divorced when I was 20. Mm. And when I was 20, I was just in London having an amazing time. I don't really think I checked in with my parents to see how they were or what they were going through. Yeah. You just, you, it's very difficult to really when you're young you also your brain hasn't developed properly let's be honest right there's that's proven mm -hmm. um so yeah looking back when you then see you've gone through things that other people can't you're like oh my god mm -hmm. i had no idea it was like that um you know with grief for example with loss with all of these things that we all go through we just all go through them of course at different times mm -hmm. um so yeah, but that's the lovely thing that life teaches yeah. us. What's the hardest thing you've gone through? The hardest thing I've gone through? Oh, gosh. Well, I was saying that to my friend. You know what? We all think we've been through hard stuff, right? We've all had stuff that's rocked our world. Mm -hmm. But I think the ultimate thing that I haven't really experienced yet, and I, I can't really think about it, but normally when these things happen to us, you, it's amazing how much the human being and soul can actually endure sometimes when you think about it people the one thing I've never really and I'm not looking forward to it I'm incredibly lucky that all the people I love all my tight-knit family are all healthy and well but obviously at some point we're all at that age where we have to we'll all have to experience that sort of loss mm. and I think they're the things that really are going to be you know, but I have a huge empathy for those that that have been through that. Mm -hmm. So I'm thankful I've never been through that. But, you know, I've definitely experienced loss. I've been through a divorce of sorts, even though I've never actually married. Mm -hmm. That that very young was traumatic for sure um, because it wasn't my plan. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, and all these things th that we don't plan, they do. The curveballs catch you off guard, but actually I think... As you get older, the curveballs don't really throw you as much. Touch how wood. It, how did it impact you then, going through what you say? I just was thoughts? young, and I was pretty chaotic in my own head as well. I wasn't, you know, obviously today it wouldn't throw me as much, but I think when you've got a young child and you're still going, you know, figuring yourself out as well, it was probably a lot for me. Um, mm. I think today, that's why living in the present is really important because, you know, we're all healthy we're all well this is pretty much as good as it gets yeah. right we are never going to be as young as we are today we're never going to be as fit and as able for me mobility is everything I'm like such an active person I just love and I've had times in my life where I've not been mobile like I broke my back mm -hmm. um oh I don't know a year ago so that kind of threw me a bit because 
for somebody so active. Mm. So these are all exercises that you, when they happen, you just got to let go, right? Mm. Um, but you can walk you? with a broken back. So that was pretty good. I was walking. What out. happened? Because I think I may have seen the story, but I, I just fell on the, like, I literally went flying down some stairs with some ice. And um, I was a bit in a hurry as always. I was, but, you know, I wasn't even in heels. I was just in flat boots in the countryside. And I was like, oh God. So, you know, and then there was another time in my life when my daughter was young and I was, I mean, I'm very clumsy, which I am. <laughs> I was hit by a car. So for me, mobility is my thing. As long as I can, you know, if I'm got, if I'm fit and healthy, then that's mm -hmm. something I'm really grateful for every day because that's a big privilege. And, you know, when I have been in those situations, for me, I knew that they were temporary. And I, I have met and seen people where that is not the case. Yeah. So I think we're all pretty lucky. Yeah, there's nothing that I'm unhappy about. I feel pretty blessed. We know you as a, you know, TV personality, somebody who, you know, has lived somewhat in the public eye. Do people misunderstand you, do you think? I don't know. It's not really my job to worry what other people think. <laughs> I thought you'd say something like I that. I don't really care. I, love that. I really don't. I don't mm. have the time to worry about. Mm. I can barely remember what I what my name is half the time and what I had for breakfast. Mm. So I can't actually walk around worrying how other people perceive me. I mean, that stopped a long time ago. Mm. When you're talking about being a child star and what I have seen through not necessarily people who I know, but just like paying attention to those who received that, you know, very intense attention early on, how quite often it translates into being very unhealthy and being like a very distressed, distraught person that doesn't really have that kind of like a root. And what I do notice is that... Really? Yeah, I do, because... And, and I think it's quite often to do with where you've come from in terms of like your parents and how you've been raised where if you've kind of you know you had that stable home that it almost doesn't really matter do you know what in a way I'm quite glad that I had because I had so much attention growing up so I kind of you know and I went here and I did that and I am kind of so happy because I feel so comfortable now not having any attention mm -hmm. or like not wanting any mm -hmm. And I'm so happy to take a back seat in as many situations as I possibly can mm -hmm. because I don't feel I ever need to be the star of the show because mm. I feel like I've got it all out of my system and more. So I'm kind of really happy because I never get... So I, I get more pleasure now in seeing other people I really enjoy. Mm. That's why I love working with younger women or, or and, or, you know, letting other women do what they need to. I really enjoy that because I never felt like I've missed out on it, you, you know? Mm -hmm. And I think also as a mother, it's really healthy. It's so lovely now when I see my daughter going in and doing all the things that she does. I'm so happy and I'm so, you know, excited for her, but not one bit of me. And, you know, it's quite sweet because she obviously likes me to go to things. She's like, oh, mom, do you want to come to this? Do you want to come to this? And I'm like, oh, my God, are you kidding? Because I've obviously been to enough fashion parties to last me the rest of my life. <laughs> and just as I've kind of got to the point where I'm like, oh, I could go and make a fire in the country. <laughs> she's um, dragging me, well, not dragging me, inviting me very nicely to go along to some of them. And... Yeah, I'm like, oh, my God, I'm kind of doing a bit of it all again, mm. um, which is lovely because she stops me being too cynical and I get to see it all in a, in a new light. But I have no desire to... I'm very happy with where I am, mm. you know? And mm. I, So I, I think sometimes also it's just... I don't think because a woman's had a lot of attention or she wanted to do something as a child, she's... She now needs attention the whole time. I think actually it's quite the opposite. Mm. In my case, and, and mm. yeah, most women I know, I don't. I think it'd be a bit odd if you're still running around desperate to be in the photo. Mm. <laughs> I suppose 
talking about the the new age you know being on social media and growing your brand your personal brand and being visible is you know talking about the likes of like Kim Kardashian mm. Jennifer Lopez they build huge empires based on their visibility and visibility and on the one hand yes you're building a brand based on your looks and how people other people perceive you but at the same time well whatever i'm just living my life and i'm doing my own thing and you mm. know so be it i'm happy to share and and on the one hand you've got the attention seeking aspect like look at me you know i'm important because and i get the excitement about doing all of that i really do like mm. i really i think it's really smart and i like it and i and you know i love seeing all these accounts where women are really excited about doing stuff but then i think the difference is that's probably their first time doing it. So it is exciting doing it mm-hmm. for the first time. But after 10, 20, 30, in my case now, over 30 years, it's not the thing that drives me personally anymore. Mm. But, you know, if I had social media 30 years ago, even 20 years ago, even 10 years ago, I'd have been like, you know, mm. it would have been more exciting probably. And it's, you know, my daughter's like, mom, you need to be doing this, you need to be doing that. You know, so many things I need to be doing. Mm. And, and and bless her, she's just trying to be helpful and kind and always wants the best for me. And she's like, you don't have enough followers. <laughs> and I'm laughing because I'm like, oh, she just thinks I obviously, she th- must think I'm being very lazy about it. She d- obviously doesn't realise I've done it for so many years before she even came along <laughs> that I just don't care enough, right? And it's wonderful that it's, it's yeah. It's just that. different. No, I love that because, I mean, not to say that everybody should be striving to have the numbers on social media, but what I love about that is, you know, being so comfortable with just doing your own bloody thing <laughs> and not having to go ahead and like, well, you should be doing that. I was like, no. I, I mean, I know I should be doing more video. And you know what? I have, I, I really have a lovely like following on Instagram I have honestly I think the nicest followers ever they are all so lovely not I just get such nobody says I mean I might get the odd one you always get the odd one there's always one who comes out with something (laughs) really stupid and you know you still get the odd one goes what's happened to your accent I mean that one always cracks me up Mm -hmm. but what happened to your accent (laughs) what happened to my accent it's hilarious um so you know you always get the odd stupid one but um no, I've got really, I get such gorgeous messages and I just chat to all my, like, like they're my mates because mm. we kind of are. <laughs> um, they're just really nice. So I think that you've got to be very careful what you wish for in this life as well. When you get things too big, people think big is great and the big is the best. Actually, it's not always the case. I'd rather have loyal and nice and manageable and... You know, so I'm quite happy. Yeah. Why did you come on the show? What what show? My show. This show. Because my friend Sarah said, go and talk and have a <laughs> nice afternoon. I was like, okay. Didn't even really question it. You seemed nice. I thought, obviously, mm. you'd be lovely and intelligent mm. if you're a friend of Sarah's. So mm. why not? Mm. I really appreciate that. You seemed like a nice woman. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Another working mummy who's... Yeah got her own business and doing her own thing so yeah we should all support each other no I really see that about you in terms of you know being so comfortable in your own skin and just having like being very true to your own values about what is important to you and then just not being sucked in into all of the superfluous you know all the you know noise all the noise and just like cutting through that and I I wish I could be more like you. Oh, that's nice. Are you sure you don't want to be more like me? I've no, still got I think to... because obviously I don't know you, and you know, having grown up watching you, like I was always <laughs> saying to you when you arrived, I was like, when we moved into this house, which was like thirty odd year, thirty years ago, and that was the time, you know, we, we had TVs, we didn't have screens, you that's know, so but be nice. watching you, I know. and then having you in the house, and that's obviously cute. having that kind of impression of 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 what you might be like um what was that out of interest to be honest because 
I mean, I did do some research on you and there's not really that much in terms like recent to like find, you know, mm. what you're like now. But I did my own research by talking to people who know you. Okay, go on then. Hit and me. that, well, I mean, just singing your praises about how genuinely wonderful and giving person you are and how you're very astute, very entrepreneurial, mm-hmm. um, have a head for business have you know incredible connector who is just a genuinely good person thank you that's Mm. nice yeah i have a different way of doing things but i get the job done (laughs) (laughs) no i think talking about the people who i speak to on the show and for me what's really important is getting the real stories of people who have done things their own way and obviously being a woman entrepreneur myself the stories of other women are so important both for me to learn from and see yes it could be possible Mm. to do it in this way yeah and also to be inspired and hopefully for the listeners to also feel like wow i had this impression of this person and they are completely Mm. not like that or I can see the human in them and you know how they've made the decisions they've made and 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 feel at peace that they are doing the right thing yeah i think you have to do the right well i feel if you're a Mm -hmm. decent person you have to do the right thing Mm -hmm. and also i think now in business as well i think those very old school ways of doing business they Mm -hmm. no longer exist that shit doesn't fly anymore Mm -hmm. you know those days where sort of very old fashioned very male very ego driven you know sort of my way or the highway that sort of uh fearful way of running people and in that you know that doesn't yeah it doesn't work today it's not Mm -hmm. it doesn't work and it's not productive so people can think people can mistake kindness with weakness Mm -hmm. and and that's something i learned as well because I'm, I have a more gentle approach in my business and I am kind, but I'm certainly not weak. <laughs> so um, it's, it, it is different. And I don't, I think people at a distance might get those confused because um, yeah, you can get things done without losing your softness and your femininity. We don't ha- all have to go around, you know, like we just stepped off the apprentice mm. to get, you know. Um, so I think we can still do things and be female and and be all of those lovely things that being female is about. And I don't think you need to lose those to to be taken seriously. Mm -hmm. Somebody who I interviewed recently, she's the CEO of Avon. So she was 25 years at the company, started as a sales manager and then literally progressed to become the CEO. She said no to the role Mm -hmm. and she didn't apply for any promotions. And listening to how she talks about her story of, you know, saying it took her a long time to realize that she doesn't have to behave like a man, but Mm -hmm. also realizing that her core strengths and what makes her different and unique Mm -hmm. are her what she calls a multiplier. So leaning yeah. into that mm-hmm. is what makes her very effective in what she does. And I think us women, we see a lot more male examples. Like even myself, when I was a kid and I learned first to read and I was like obsessed with reading and all of the stories were about, you know, night saving princesses. And I grew up wanting to be the man in the story yeah, because it's... that's the one that I related most to but it's yeah like, I want to have adventures I want to do these yeah you know, bold big things and yeah. not having enough of yeah female role models and learning now to lean into those things and not having to copy another way of doing it and not have to explain yourself the whole time it's kind of boring as well I just um I yeah I just I'm do very you- I'm much more confident in doing things my way now especially mm-hmm. when you've had a few things that when it starts to work your way a bit, you go, okay, I, you know, it's, you're not crazy as well as the other thing. Um, I think it's learning to trust yourself, I think, as a woman. And I've definitely, you know, it took a very long time, but I really trust 
myself now because mm-hmm. I think my decisions are good. What do you feel like you had to explain yourself that you... Oh, God, I think you have to spend way too many times explaining myself to everybody. I mean, I can't believe I'm kind of annoyed that I spend so much time. Up, like, you know, we've all seen the memes on social media, like most women apologising, um, explaining. And, you know, what a waste of time, when you, especially when you, we've got shit to do. <laughs> um, so, but this is one of the things that you, we learn, right? Mm. And, you know, I don't ask permission for anything now. I just do. <laughs> Mm. If you ask permission, you're giving other people the power the whole time. I always just go, it's okay, can I do that? Mm. You know, just to do what you want. Mm. What advice, apart from that, but what advice would you give to female entrepreneurs? I mean, you work a lot with women and female entrepreneurs. Like, what advice would you give them? Say three pieces of advice. God, I don't think, I mean, to be honest, I've learned a lot from female entrepreneurs. And I know the ones that I know certainly don't need any advice from me. I think listening is really important. That took me a while as well. <laughs> but I really enjoy listening. Mm. Um, I'm happy to listen, even if I don't agree with what somebody's saying. And even if, you know, I don't need to agree, but I think it's very important to be heard, it, it, whoever you're working with. So I always let people feel heard. Um, and... I'm very comfortable to listen, even if it's sometimes for too long. <laughs> and as I say, even when I don't agree, I don't feel the need to. Um, yeah, so I think listening is probably the most important thing. And I think it's the one thing we all don't do so much when we're younger. Uh, and I don't know if that's an anxiety thing or a whatever. You know, I I remember being like that myself. So I would say that to anybody, really, in any circumstance. Just listen more. Mm. Don't stress as much. I think we always used to, you know, most of the stuff is fixable. You know, like I always say most things are fixable other than obviously a lot of what's going on in the world right now. And death, right? That's kind of permanent. Mm. Um so yeah I wouldn't stress so much I would listen more what's the third thing yeah trust your gut trust yourself talking about the gut the lady that was here before you um, who is now um, on the board of many companies so she's not this is the Avon lady she sounds great Uh, that was Angela one of my favourite companies growing up Avon College I used to get so excited when they used to knock on the door you used to fill out all of your little things. Mm-hmm. So many great companies like that built with female, yeah. you know, grassroots building a company like that. It's kind 100%. of amazing. Mm-hmm. Uh, it, wasn't, it wasn't Angela, it was Beatrice. And she was talking about the difference between, like listening to your gut, the difference between intuition and ego. And mm-hmm. I thought that was really interesting because sometimes like, you know, your, your instinctive response can be like, is it your intuition? Or is it your ego speaking? And I thought, oh, I like that because it's learning to distinguish between yeah. the two as well. Yeah, no. Way. Which is when listening comes in too, because we're both listening to yourself and to others. Yeah. We're talking about what drives you now is different. Yeah. Like what? Like what's next for you? Like what? What's driving you to your like the next stage in your life? Um. I just also don't want to be, I don't want to be too busy, right? I don't want to run around like I had this chicken. I want to set up some really great things. I want to do things that make me happy. Well, everything I do right now makes me happy. I mean, I want to just keep doing what I do. You know, I'm, I'm surrounded by amazing friends and interesting people who I love. Uh, I want to spend as much time, but not too much time, because I know my daughter needs to like go and do her thing. But, you know, like sort of just be there for her when she needs me and, and you know, do a good job for other people as well. I, with my new company, I, there's a lot of things I want to do and I want to help as many people as I can and help them grow and build. Um, and what also, is your company? Uh, so it's, it's very, very new. We're supporting and helping. Basically, again, it's people driven. So it could be in any sector, any field, wherever we feel there's a situation or a person so it's a bit of a mix of philanthropy and business or backing but 
for us, it's just meeting different, you know, it could be families, it could be people, it could be anybody that sort of needs some help or support in, in seeing if we can do that. And that's been really interesting. Obviously, we've got the Family Foundation, which is rewilding lots of animals around the world. So there's that. Um, and I want to just get back on set as well and, and make some great work because I'm getting really twitchy now. So I want to work. Mm. I feel like I want to go perform and, you know, flex my acting muscles a bit mm. and work with some good people there. Is that's what kind just of acting role? Like, what's your dream role? I'd like to do an American series. I, I also like to do a really great British drama. I love the, uh, you know, so UK and American, but I'd like to do a bit of both. Mm -hmm. um, I'd like to do something that's a bit more of a t total departure from anything I've done before. Um, so something that's a little bit more rough around the edges, uh, that's really emotionally driven. Mm. Uh, but I like all those really strong, dramatic female roles. I also like the comedy stuff. So yeah, there's loads I need to do there because I've been a bit preoccupied. But <laughs> I need to... Um, I'm ready. I can't wait to get onto set and do something. Mm. Talking about comedy, yeah, I decided to do some comedy writing course. Oh, did you? So, I mean, I'm not a writer, but um, I don't know. Just somehow, this this seemed like the right thing to do in 2024. And what I didn't anticipate happening because I used to write poetry when I was um, at nice. school, uh, just for fun, just doing that, and I, just how lyrical and how close it is to poetry in terms of like the timing and the rhythm the, and the, the timing the rhythm the syllables yeah. the sound of the words so i'm like actually i don't know why i haven't done this sooner i mean not comedy is great it's such fun it's yeah it's there's a lot in it as well there's a lot of psychology in that yeah understanding I mean, with acting too, like understanding the other person, understanding what's going to land well, understanding the nuance of like the mundane situation that you're trying to uh, explain in the most so many... relatable and funny way. Yeah. So because it's the writing, it's the, um, the sort of choreography. I mean, there's so many things, the movement. It's kind of mm -hmm. quite beautiful, actually, mm -hmm. a really well choreographed. It's like Especially all that song. farcical humour is great. I mean, I've got a couple of things I'd like to develop mm -hmm. um, on the comedy side. So yeah. you don't want to be too busy then? <laughs> I've got, I know, I'm literally, I have to say, yeah, I haven't really done a very, I've not done a good job of not being very busy because I, I, it's just kind of in you, in me, yeah. So my days, are all, I get up at like 4.35 and I'm pretty much mm. on the go till about 11.30 because I, but I, I really feel like also, it's not always like that, but I've really, I think for a little while I had a bit of a period where I was like, oh, you know, when you haven't got that, you, you just haven't got your mojo because you, I didn't really, I wasn't focused on what I was doing and what I wanted to do. And it's so clear to me now, like I, it's so clear. And that's lovely when you've got that clarity because you don't always have it. I think, you know, there was a year I was like, just didn't really know exactly what I wanted to do next. Um, and now I'm, I've, yeah, I'm so clear on what the, what I want to do. Mm -hmm. So that's obviously half, more than half the problem, right? Definitely. <laughs> the execution bit is easy. Um, so that's also why I'm having very busy, very long days because I'm just really enjoying everything that I'm doing. What's helped you gain the clarity? To be honest, I've always ha been quite clear. I, when I had a bit of a creative, uh, uh, I think that sometimes when you've got other things going on in your life, it can block creativity. So if you are particularly very stressed or you've got, you're a bit, you know, and actually when I had this block of like, uh, I did also have a lot of other stuff going on. So that's clearly that. And as soon as that passes, because most things pass, right? As soon as that part, I could feel all of the clarity mm -hmm. coming back in my work and my creativity. So they're obviously connected, you know? So, and also if, if there are things going on like that, you've just also got to accept that mm -hmm. that's how it is for now. And it's the hardest thing though. And just you know, to not put too much pressure on you because you're not going to start pulling rabbits out of hats if you're in the middle of, you know, sorting out whatever you've got going on. So mm -hmm. I think it's important to not put too much pressure on yourself because that's 
really going to have the opposite effect yeah for sure so just accept that for six months this is how it's going to be and you're doing this or for however long Mm -hmm. you're doing it no I mean and you're right about it being a phase that it will pass yeah yeah what is that this too shall pass yeah most uh, things do I think when we're young though we're young we're like when you're in like your 20s like I look at 20s I don't even think young I think like you're still a child (laughs) yeah um you just be, think that that's it. This I is know, it. we're just babies, really, and we put all that pressure on ourselves to, like, get it all right. And, God, I can see that now. You know, like, they do. My my daughter is amazing, and she puts so much pressure on herself. I'm like, just relax. You're so young. You need to do this. I haven't done You know what I mean? It's just we all need to give ourselves a break. We know that. Yeah, I know, 100%. percent like, you know, how are we so tough on ourselves? It's not. Yeah, why are we so tough? I don't ourselves? know. I don't know. It's like this. Oh, people are just are. That's mm. just how they're wired. And that just makes them driven and wanting to achieve that competitiveness. Yeah, I've always been driven. Like, mm-hmm. I've always been driven. I'm not sure where I'm driving to half the time, but I, I, I've always been going somewhere mm-hmm. in my head. Mm-hmm. Um, but I've never been competitive in any sort of negative way it's just mm. not in my character so I think you can be incredibly driven without being the way they portray you can women be competitive is... with yourself right exactly it doesn't have to I'm, be that's exactly what I was yeah that's mm. what I was trying to say so I've always been hard on myself or com- pushed myself or been a bit driven with myself but I've never really felt any competition mm. with others mm. I've only felt actually <laughs> a lot of I love think that's and how you've retained your sanity because I think you know, I don't want to be anybody else as well, right? I don't want to. I think it's part of nature, though, to com- to compare. It's the you know, comparison is the thief of joy. But I think we we are and wired to pay attention to what everybody else is doing, and I think knowing how to switch that part off or learn from it, because I think you know, I've always been around a lot of incredibly successful or really cool women, or you know, doing amazing things or really. And instead of that letting, that's never intimidated me. I just go, oh my God, because you could actually just switch off from it. But I've always sort of like gone, oh my God, how did you do that? It's amazing. Mm -hmm. You know, because just learn, just ask. So I go, oh my God, that's amazing. You know, like I've always been impressed by women that have built businesses. And instead of pulling away from that and looking at that person as my enemy or competitor, I'm like, oh wow what did you do oh my god did you in the go oh I did this I did that can I do one to me I'd like oh my god I'd love that can I you know like can you really and because most women want to help each other I've always been fascinated how other people have done stuff and it always feels like a big crazy mystery but then you go well, hang on it's not that much of a mystery mm. and also you go so and so can do it, and so and so can do it then it can't be rocket science right that was it's not that hard. Mm. You just need to learn the formula. We, we think it must that. be some crazy, mythical, big thing that we can't have access to, that you can't do that because, mm. or you, you can't do that because, or they must have had, they must have only done it because they had this. That's another thing we all get into, the guilty thing of saying, oh, well, she only did it because she must have had mm. X, Y, and Z. No, not at all. You're probably fine. She had even less than you did doing it I love this we saying. make these excuses of to why she did it and you didn't do it actually she just got up off her ass and did it she did it <laughs> yeah I love the saying of assumption is the mother of all fuck-ups yeah and and this is just the assumption and 75 is it 70 percent or 75 percent of assumption is incorrect mm, exactly it's pretty high exactly which is why I love having these conversations because it's throwing light about how things are possible and how things are done and how that you can do it too. Yeah, you really can. Mm. Like you just need to break it down and instead of making that your enemy, mm. make it your friend, right? And mm. just ask the question. There is no, you know, you always, there's always these things. I mean, I grew up with them myself. I remember thinking, oh, you need so much money to make money or you need so much of this to do this. Or you need to have a really fancy education or you need to have gone to business school, right? I looked at all of these things that I didn't have as a way of going, 
oh, that's how they did it. They must have done it like that. It's just not the case. Mm. They just actually took a bit of a risk and you've got to just get stuck in and mm. figure it out. Don't really need anything to do anything. Just learn, I think. You said less thinking and more doing. <laughs> yeah, just ask people, just call people and go, you know, most people love sharing. It's true. Most people love to help you if you're brave enough to ask for yeah. it. And I think that's, it took me a long time to be, to ask for any sort of help anywhere because I was, I thought pride was a, a strength mm. and actually it's such a weakness because I was so proud. I didn't want to ask for help in anything. And then... When actually you go and feel, actually, you know what, I'm really struggling. I can't, this is, what do you think? And people, you know, people want to come forward and give you advice and help. And I forget you know, that sometimes. For it. You've got to ask for it. I used to think that. I used to I know that, not even think that early on in my career about just asking. Mm -hmm. And sometimes I forget and I'm thinking, oh, they only helped me because I was young and inexperienced. But it's like, where is this thought? Where is this like limiting belief even coming from? Of course, people, Most people they're will happy help. to help then, they're happy to help now. Most What's people will, I mean, you know, you've got to be a pretty awful individual if you won't give advice to somebody that asks for it. Mm. It's enjoyable. I think you get, the other person gets quite a lot from it too. It's not just a one-way street. No, for sure. It's nice to share. It makes you feel good. Mm. Well, Donna, you're amazing. Thank Thanks. you so much for Thank you. this wonderful conversation. I mean, I could keep talking to you. I know, I've got to get to Soho is... now. I know, that's the my... only reason why I'm stopping so now. But thanks but no. for having me in your lovely home. Thank you. And I really enjoy your show. Thanks for having me. Thank you, Donna. You've been listening to Anatomy of a Leader with me, Maria Vorostovsky. Again, a huge thank you to all of you who left the reviews on Apple Podcasts. I'm going to be reading some out. Right, so this one is from Steve Elvin. A very good listen and came to nose and follow further content from you, being a longtime listener of Rob Moore, also a favourite of mine. I enjoyed your challenge interview style with him and being a modern man myself and a firm believer in equal ops and rights, as well as many shared opinions Rob often expresses. It was refreshing to hear you challenge those and why he feels as he does about different things. I am also a business owner and run an IFA firm for financial advice to high net worth clients. So a lot of the topics, issues discussed around money were very interesting. Well, thank you so much, Steve. I really appreciate your comments and please keep them coming. I'm going to be reading out all of the good, the bad and the ugly. And if you love these inspiring stories of leaders from all walks of life and want to support our show, the best thing you can do is to subscribe or follow depending on the platform. Thank you so much and I'll see you next week.